So we're going to continue exploring um, A11i with Joanna, who's going to talk about us, about being ready for it or not. So uh, welcome, Joanna. Thanks so much. Um, do you hear me well with this? All good? Good. Um, I really want to start with a basic question. If there are people in the room that don't know, no, well, let's go the other way. Who in the room knows about what A11i means? Okay. I'm glad. I chose this not to put on the spot the ones that don't. Uh, it's really not a problem. Literally, yesterday, one of my colleagues working in tech asked me what's that test about, and I was like, did you even like try to Google it first before asking paid job, I mean. Um, I like this, um, whoa, this is fast. I like this title, it's not a bug, definitely a feature, because probably you know the developers uh, have, tend to have this reply when the QA says, oh, I found a bug, and they are just nice enough to say, like, it's not a bug, it's just a feature. And I really want uh, for you all to treat accessibility, which that stands for A11i, accessibility, treat accessibility like something that has to come, uh, like a feature implemented by the default, and it's not a bug, Definitely not an enhancement. I'll mention that about, uh, more uh, in the talk. Who am I, who am I and why I'm here? Um, my name is Yona Kiran. I tend to reply also to Luana, Yona, any other kind of version of my name. Um, slightly, I embrace more Luana because it has a Hawaiian tent of feeling, and who doesn't like Hawaii? It's such tropical, not raining like this, warmer more. I'm a project management at this point, a former QA team lead, quality assurance, and I lead four projects uh, as a contractor for Mozilla in Cluj, Romania. Yes, that's the heart of Transylvania. I took my blood in the morning, I'm not gonna buy it. I have, uh, literally I have to change the slide, I have uh, almost 10 years, next month I'll make 10 years since when I started volunteering with Mozilla. And uh, I do other volunteer with the European Commission, especially I want to mention because we are in Brussels, Code Week, it's an initiative to teach more people to be literate in digital skills. Not everyone has to learn how to code, but everyone has to understand how the computers work because want it or not, we are gonna have more of those coming in the future. And I work for devices with more than 10 years. Not happy about that, but we'll see. Um, Sarah Hendron had a really nice uh, quote that I posted right there. At the course of our life, we traffic between relative independence and dependence. And I really agree with this because even if we are considered lucky and we have pretty much everything we need daily, we do face situations in which all of our, um, all of our um, good sides or everything that are considered perks of living in a nice European city maybe will definitely go under uh, even when you go with a metro or you travel for something else or you have colleagues that you work for from different countries. And it doesn't matter if at a certain point uh, we are used to everything good, we have to also be prepared for something changing. In this world there are one billion people having a certain disability, it means 50% uh, means of the entire world, and it's not a joke, and more than two million people have a very significant disability. What I mean here is that I will be the first to accept I have no disability visible, I have no disability on paper, but I do have issues when I tend to write and I'll write, read, and I'll show you an example. Even if I'm tested, my name is the blind one translated, but I see well, officially. But some people tend to miss the part that slightly on the screen we display things differently, and they do not test it for um, our um, accessibility issues. Welcome. I wanna ask you if any of you sees the error on this screen for the, from the start. Good. Can you tell me what it is? Yeah, so around here, I had this talk before and somebody told me that literally they didn't see it even when I showed it. So this is a column, it's a line, where the column t have titles, but you can barely see it. This was from a page of conference that has tickets more than 1.K euros for the conference. And they expect people to go and buy it, right? I wasn't able to see what I'm buying for. And again, it was a well-paid conference, it was nothing made by a, I don't know, a developer trying to do a project from himself. You expect like, to see. And 
I'm not going to even mention. The reply was, um, can you tell us more? We don't understand what you mean. And I literally wrote the guy, Ronan, I don't understand what the columns are. I need to change, to use inspect and change the behind color to understand what you're selling to me. And it's about money. And you won't attend this to your conference, right? And uh, again, officially, I have no disability, no vision in person, no problem with my eyes. Well, you never know these ones, right? Um, so yeah, we kind of realized that some issues are around there, but how could we fix it? A nice um, quote from Wright says that we can fly without motors, but not without knowledge and skills. If you don't know how to control the motors, we probably end up in a not a good position. So let's talk about what does it mean, accessibility in form of um, disabilities. Welcome. The vision one that I mentioned to you now, it uh, can be from complete blindness or color blindness for poor vision. In our case, it was just a not nice color chosen and probably was compared with a poor vision from my side on the screen that I chose to have. And um, also flashing elements will definitely cause stroke to some people. You probably know uh, there are many mentioned till now and try to avoid them as possible. Physical disabilities. People that cannot use the mouse or cannot um, uh, use the hands, so they either have to use voice or um, tabs to go forward to a page. Cognitive disabilities, these uh, uh, are like learning difficulties or poor memory. You're not able to understand the font, was written on a page, or you have dyslexia, and it's very hard for you to understand uh, if the text is very narrowed or mixed and uh, is not uh, addressing your condition. And we go back to literacy, disability, I mentioned this before. I really think it's important for people to learn how to navigate the internet, how to navigate a page in the browser. You have issues when uh, you don't understand what the box is, uh, what's a button doing, so problem like this. That's more addressing web literacy. And hearing, uh, here of course you hear very well, if you, you hear well, you very low. And um, if you have a song or your, um, web is trying to communicate something, most of the people will not be able to uh, hear it. But you are here because we really believe that the web, at least Mozilla stands for this, the web is for everyone and it's our job to make it available for them. And uh, more and more we tend to use automatic things, we tend to use devices, and even if you're not talking about smartphone, when you go to pay maybe at a marketplace. You can go now and uh, choose to pay by yourself without any interaction with a human, or if you want to go and buy a ticket for the bus, not very friendly here in Brussels, just saying I was not able. Um, you definitely need to have some skills in reading those things and need access uh, to approach more accessibility. How many of you try to buy something online and the button is too small for your cute little fingers? Yes. How many of us zooms like this to see something there because they are not, yes. Again, I'm called the blind one, so I take all this on me. Everyone else is perfect in the room, I'm not. I was mentioning that we need to do this, and we're asking, okay, Joanna, it's nice, but why? Literally, the first thing that I wanted to put on the page is because of the people. Again, like um, I mentioned before, the audible part, it's literally, if someone is whispering to you and don't understand, you cannot do, the, do anything else. Also like um, you want to try more things, you go in new countries, you're really limited. Um, it was literally a, um, an example here. This is not my laptop. Unfortunately, this is it. And I wanted to borrow one of my colleagues. It was all in German. I knew everything in the browser, even in German, because I'm used to it. But if somebody else would try to use it, not having a knowledge of the browser nor the language was not that easy for them. And um, I also wanted to show you some examples because you probably see like, oh, if I don't have any disability, I'm 100% safe on, the, on this side. A real life example would be the wheelchair ramps, you know? Any um, institutions from the state or government should have the ramps for disabilities or the sidewalk. When you go down from a sidewalk, cross a street and go up, they should have those little ramps. How many of you use those with bikes? Exactly. Don't be ashamed, like we all do, if we don't have bike lanes. You, how many of you saw moms with babies in strollers using them? Do they have disabilities? Do you think a cute mom with a little baby has a disability? It's not. I'm seeing you. It is not. 
So things like this really, even I when I run, I don't want to go from like this to this and have an impact. I tend to use the ramps more and more. So again, situation where you don't consider yourself disabled, but you use things that are addressed to disabled people. Regulation. Everyone here is like, they don't even ask for that, Joanna. What are you talking about? Nobody cares. Well, I'm fortunate, I'm sad to say that these are the countries that adopted the VG, a, VCAG. Um, the green ones, you see it here, are still at version one, but they have it. The, um, in pink, they are recommended, and the red ones, which is pretty intense, um, have adopted the 2.0. My colleague had a talk really before this, and he mentioned more about what this regulation implies and how you should implement it as a developer. So if you're saying your country is not, maybe you're from Africa, which is not a bad thing, and I'm glad, but definitely you're going to step in and join us in this, or Russia, but I don't know. I'm not going to talk to Russia. I'm um, neighbors with them almost, so I'm, I'm friends. Um, or Greenland. If you want to go there, join me. I want to go too. Let's see. Maybe we can implement the terms there. So pretty much all the countries adopted, in a way, this kind of regulation. So um, there is no excuse. Users. I literally had a talk yesterday, or somebody earlier at the talk mentioned, how can I see if somebody is using the voiceover on my page? How could I know how many users are disabled? Okay, I think there are many tweaks on telemetry that you can uh, implement, and they might tell you if something is click or not, but it doesn't even matter at this point. Because um, one of the oldest examples in the world with data sets comes from the World War II, when the industry was so blooming and they wanted to build everything the next day and beat our uh, competitors, you know? And they decided to look at the planes to put more metal or like make them harder to um, get a bullet on the sides that uh, are more affected. So what did they do? They look at each plane that came back from the world and saw where had bullets in. And they realized that, oh, in the wings, we can fix that. Here, we can fix that. Oh, the tail. We can even take it off. I'm kidding. But the, they didn't see the big problems. These were the planes that returned to the base. Those who got the most affected did not ever return. So those were the problematic ones. This one with issues here can be fixed. They are coming back. Those with issues not mentioned or harder than this never came back, unfortunately. So when you're looking at a database of users, be careful what you're testing. You might be on the wrong side. And um, I wrote that no honey, man. <laughs> no money, honey. No return of investment. Come on, people. You can enhance your brand. Do more for the world. And definitely having a good page will uh, bring you only good sides. And money comes after. If you see how many um, um, shoppings are done with pages that have accessibility embedded or people that address new people, new user, new markets, I mean, the amount of money that they do, I think it's considerable. And one thing that I think um, it's very important, and I mentioned it from the beginning, is not uh, doing favors to anyone. It's literally doing your job. Because accessibility is not an enhancement to it, it's not something that is nice to have, or maybe a bug, certain tester put it and bother you. It's something that we should be having by default. You should drive innovation at anything on the web and improve the best practices. This was part of the show to wake you up. Um, what I mean by improving practices, if we would have stayed at the wheel made of wood, I don't think we would have uh, had these nice cars that you see around here with the air wheels and everything. So even if it's a good practice at the moment, we should always strive to improve it and make uh, more, um, more accessible to all. So the second part, what I mentioned that um, it's nice to know, but you have to learn and um, nobody has time, I know. But I'm here to show you a trick that the browser can do and those are the accessibility audits. Um, I mentioned in the early talk I replied to a question. I really recommend Stefan's talk. Stefan's, yeah, he's here. We'll see you later. Um, work on accessibility. He's part of the accessibility club in Berlin. And he did mention to this, uh, to this to me in a session when I asked him, Stefan, let's talk about money. How much time slash money you are wasting by implementing the accessibility issue? He was like, what are you talking about? It's like anything else I learned, like a new class, like a new framework that I adopt. I have to study it once, 
which I did it for in his case a long time ago. And now I just take it with myself in all other projects. And I realized that exactly that is because, come on, everyone, each of you from here who develops a page, tries new stuff and then adopts it without thinking like, oh, this takes me five minutes. That's like 50 cents, maybe much. I don't know. So I think it's just a um, case of positioning ourselves, and that's my case today to you. How can you do this easier? DevTools audits, I'm gonna mention some of them uh, in the talk. Color contrast, it showcased also. Pattern and colors, be careful there. People might tend to not see uh, different uh, patterns in your, in your page or typography. What struck me here is that indeed some people cannot understand the scripts or like very calligraphic fonts, it's very hard for them. And unfortunately for, well, unfortunately it's not correctly used, Fortunately and unfortunately, Comic Sans, which all of us hate, or at least is a meme to hate Comic Sans, is the best one to address dyslexia. This was a study and most people really had an improved um, experience on the web while using Comic Sans. If there is any designer in the room, I'm apologizing for mentioning this. Um, animations, they are super cool, right? But not everyone can handle them. Uh, they provoke strokes or also for normal people like me sometimes are like, what even I'm looking, I don't understand. So try not to put so many on your page. Most of the people uh, will not understand all of them. So I'm thing here, um, I'll show you an example later. And please add alt input for all of the things you have. If people want to parse your page, they should know where they are, uh, they should, should be able to hear what they are parsing while they're opening different tabs or buttons on your page. Okay. Dev to audits. This is the cutest part because we go back to my favorite browser, which is be careful Firefox or nightly for Firefox. And um, another question earlier in the talk, and I literally address it now, was asking which framework is the best. It really doesn't even matter which framework you choose at the end of the day. It's everything about in the browser, and you can use it. I have to admit, unfortunately, that also other browsers have some things, not only Firefox, but I recommend Firefox. It's easier. And I'm going to open the ARIA tree inspector in a second. And um, that was made with uh, Mozilla Accessibility Team, which literally includes people with disability, visual or hearing ones, and physical ones. And uh, being there in the DevTools, we can run a simulation. Let's see if that works. This is the talk. I already opened the, the F12. Um, the accessibility panel. I'm going to just turn on the features and um, move to one of the pages we um, use for, and I have to open it again, of course, uh, for the examples here. And um, as I mentioned, it's just simple simulation. It's already embedded in the browser and you can choose to check for all these um, three. Of course, all of them, but I'm going to take them one by one so you see the difference. Big. So here, if we parse from the first thing, it will tell us that we don't have a good color contrast. Um, the standard goes to triple um, A, and here we are definitely not on the good side. If uh, we are going to go in the inspector, uh, wait for me, it's live coding, so never works from the beginning. We can either um, change the background here with something more darker, or it's not there. Oh, wait. And voila, let's run again. Yes, this, uh, let's run. Contrast. I should load. Okay. So we fixed that one. Very simple. I know you'll say like black on white is not. This is the minimal I can do like instantly. Of course, your designers or five more minutes from your side will choose a better. There is a tool online which will give you pairings of colors, all mentioned in links in the, in the talk. Or if you want, you can change the, the color of the text here. The second one issue, you see, um, you will say that keyboard, like parsing with a keyboard on your on your page will not bring any value back because you're not defined that. And you'll see like, oh, how she knows that? I don't. But there is a link to learn more. So after you get all of this audit, you can go and uh, learn more about it and see if it literally makes an impact or not. 
if you can do it from the beginning or you just have this. This is the best part and it's pretty much implemented in the second part of uh, last year. Um, there is a, was a tool, webhints.io, probably saw it, I think it was at Fosmec last year too with cute stickers of a whale. Um, it literally gives you at any point in your page hints about how can you, can, how can you improve it better uh, and make it more accessible. Again, I know it's 2020, nobody has time to learn everything, but these little tricks online help us do a better job. Um, something that is uh, literally fresh and uh, hot in DevTool is also this uh, simulator, which again will find the same issues. Even if the color contracts is okay, which um, I'll have to say I think it's not the best. Let's see. Um, it's the same issue with the keyboard behind it. I'm sorry, I was looking now. And let's run the simulation now. Mm, all issues this time. Yeah, it's fine. But if we look at only contrast, um, Oh, it doesn't say. I'll show you on the slides. Uh, I will say that it's uh, minimal, but not triple eight, which is the regulation uh, recommended. Um, I have this tab open, oops, tab open in case of the internet not working because you have to prepare for everything. So let's um, one. Okay. Again, I, what I show you is just simple on um, F12, opening the accessibility panel and you can do their, uh, the, the simulation mentioned. This is what I did before, again, in case of uh, no internet, and you can see even in the element of field input, we had uh, the focus issue and also not a label for it. Again, when they will parse the website and they will get to the text input, where you definitely want them to enter something, they could not read what's behind, the label uh, behind it. And you can see here, again, learn more for each one, and all of the issues they found on the page are uh, mentioning the type of the error and also a link to learn more for them. What I changed the, the background and after that I changed the color of it to have a showcase and again, just a simple uh, change of uh, color in the file, in the inspect. Okay, here. Um, this was what I mentioned a bit more and if you see here, they will show that it's a double A, which is okay but you can learn more, again, about the, the standard that I mentioned with the links there. Other tools that help you learn this one, um, the first one, and I guess you all know about this term, manual testing. There is no such thing like manual testing. Everything you do, it's a testing. Uh, but I would recommend you to just try to keep your clothes, uh, eyes closed and try to navigate your page first. Yeah, it was a hard one for me. Um, and after that, of course, there are tools online like JAWS for Microsoft or Orca VoiceOver for um, Mac OS to help you use uh, the page in, uh, in blind mode or visi reduced visibility mode. Lighthouse is a tool from uh, Google. Not happy, but, but it's a good one. Uh, you can do the whole simulation of your page in Lighthouse, and one of their features is to give you more details about the accessibility status of your uh, project. Wave is also doing a screening for everything that's included and also totally will give you details about how to implement it best. I mentioned web hints till now. They will only give you hints of what to change, uh, but that's already incorporated in uh, the developer tool that we have. And um, why I was mentioning that I'm the first person with problems here, I have at work three different operating systems, a laptop and two machines, and I have two screens for the machine, and I always find these coloring pairings between them. I know a normal pe person would change the monitor settings to have them correctly, but of course I kept it because I wanted to find bugs. And I was just moving from one sc screen to another to see the differences in color, and I realized it's an accessibility issue. And of course, devices, um, mobile devices and others. I mentioned earlier that Stefan does a really cool uh, work on that, and he has a really resourceful page with links to understanding why, different technical implementation, what tools are the best, uh, and opinions from both administrative uh, person or just uh, developers. And as I mentioned now, Firefox developer tool, and I've linked there a page for the community and how you can contribute more. I mentioned the talk earlier, um, held by Gabriele. He did um, 
short tips and tricks to create a better accessibility front end pages. And from 1215, we have more on the developer tools, the new profiler. Uh, and it's not by Gabriele, it's by Nazim. Sorry for my mistake. But you'll find it in the schedule. And um, if one thing is, uh, one thing I want you to leave uh, this room with is that we should definitely be the leaders. And of course, I had to put the fox because they are really cute, especially this one. Don't be the sheep, be the leading fox in your work. And because we are at the open, uh, free and open conference, we should definitely keep the all information open for everyone and we should not block uh, their access. Thank you very much. You see the slides at the bit.ly link and a very thoughtful quote from Tim Berners-Lee uh, from V3C. And now, round four questions. Thank you. So, questions? I see you. I see you, Lily. I'm kidding. Have a good day. Uh, hi. Thank you very much for your talk. Um, I'm from France, and we have a national... Can you speak a bit louder? I'm... Sure. Uh, I'm from France, and we have a national guidelines inspired by the WCAG. It's the RGAA, and I had the formation a couple of years ago, and the teacher told us like 40% only of the criteria of this official document on accessibility can be automated, like there can be on yeah. automated criteria. So at, at the time, uh, I understood that it was the case we need human analysis on websites for accessibility. Do you think it's still the case? And just a second question, quickly, quickly. Uh, do you think that the, myriad, the, the multitude of tools around accessibility is a bad thing or a good the what? thing? The what? There are many browser extensions, yes. tools around accessibility, and it feels to me that efforts are sh split around many projects, and I'm not sure it's the best. What, what are your thoughts about this? So first, uh, uh, to address the automated part, of course there are extensions to change your code and to improve it. I showed a view of them, also on their side of the users. There are many tools to read the screen, to change the color contrast. Um, I'm always laughing because the library that I use back in Romania has this color brand version of the website and they literally implemented turning everything in black background and yellow as a right. Like, again, we are 2020. Having a page black with written in yellow, it kills my eyes. I'm like downgrading my vision. So that's a, a bad side of it. So indeed, some of the tools can automate this, but it's not in perfect way. And I agree with you when you say that there are too many, and I agree that this is uh, bringing a bad impact, because like everything, having more devices on Android, for example, makes it even harder to have a good page for all of the hardware, all of the screens, all of the manufacturers, everything. Exactly with the same with the tools. Having them so many and these parts, and not all of them address all of the issues on accessibility, and if you choose one that addresses less of the issues, you'll have, again, a less accessible page. So. I think it's a bad thing. Uh, I don't think you're gonna end up having just one standard in tooling, but definitely some of them differentiate. And uh, I, I will go with browser tools, because again, you don't need anything to add. They are literally right there for you. And we are moving forward to more web internet, I would say, my opinion. Any more questions? Yes. And that's gonna be the last, because we need to switch speakers afterwards. They will call a better version of me, changing speakers. Are there any accessibility user groups where interested developers could join and where, yeah. uh, where developers exchange maybe visual impact could help uh, checking pages? And which one would you recommend? Yeah, there are these accessibility clubs. Um, I'm not sure if they have literally all the big cities uh, meetups, but uh, literally search for accessibility clubs and they do have this. And it's a big conference on accessibility in Berlin in November, maybe this year will be another city. Um, at least, even in Cluj, we addressed it uh, in all the front-end meetups, like JS Hero. Um, so yeah, definitely. I can even search for you later if you want to have a specific one. But first step also, we'll go to Stefan's blog, and he is part of the group making this web more accessible. Thank you very much, Joanna. Thank you. Um.